so I was diagnosed on Valentine's Day with this very rare, incurable stage four cancer. I was given 10 years to live. That was kind of the beginning of this healing exploration that I decided I wanted to document. And first and foremost, I was documenting it for myself, but also because as coming from the arts, coming from a place of being a creator, that's how I get to know myself. That's how I make sense of what's happening in my world. It gave me a creative focus. It gave me something to take my mind off of cancer. And I started filming my experience. I had taken so much rejection in my previous career that I was like, all I need is one person to believe in me. You just don't see it, but I see it and I'm gonna keep this faith and I'm gonna keep moving ahead because I will find one person who believes in this. You're used to projecting a certain image that it's not necessarily you. And the shift for me was, this is your opportunity to be fully yourself. And the more fully yourself you are, the better chance it has. So I was diagnosed on Valentine's Day with this very rare, incurable stage four cancer. I was given 10 years to live. And, you know, the first doctor that I spoke to suggested a triple organ transplant. And I'm coming from this very different world. I did not know anything about, first and foremost, about the body, you know. What or was the it, symptom? What made you go to get checked out in the first place? I was having a lot of pain in my side. Um, and to be honest with you, I just thought it was constipation. I was like, I think it's constipation, but maybe I should go check it out, you know, but I put how, it off. How long did that pain been last? Was it I like put it off for a while. Yeah, I had put it off for probably about a month okay. um, and it kept getting worse. And then I decided to go to my GP and they did a uh, ultrasound and they said that, that I had lesions all over my liver and mm. I didn't know what lesions were. <laughs> So I was like, what's a lesion? Are you just like, are in my liver's cut up? Like too many martinis? Like, what are you saying? And they were like, no, lesions are tumors. And you need to go get a full body scan to see if there's someplace else. And then a biopsy to see what the heck they are. And you went right to Whole Foods. Which Whole Foods did you go to? Well, I went to Whole Foods after all that rigmarole when, you know, then I got the scans and then I had the first um, doctor appointment, the second one, the third opinion. And then finally, around that time, I was like, this is a bit, this is a thing. Like I got to figure out who to hire, who to fire, who to be on my team. This uh -huh. is a business and I'm going to have to be in charge of it. And I don't know how to be a patient navigator. And I don't know how to take care of myself. We have to figure out all those things because this is an incurable shit pickle. And now I am the captain of it. Um, and around that time I had met my doctor who is still my doctor 20 years later. And he said, look, sometimes this can be slow growing. Sometimes it can be aggressive. Sometimes it can change out of nowhere. So we just are, we're going to watch and wait and create a baseline and figure out how it's going to behave in you. And while we're watching and waiting and tracking and creating that baseline, you need to live, you need to watch and live. Mm -hmm. And that moment was very profound for me because as I said, I didn't know how to do that. So I thought that people who live go to Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> they eat healthy things. They seem to radiate in ways that I don't understand. So I'm going to start at that grocery store and see where it takes me. I have a personal question. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but uh, I'll ask it anyway. Um, to, I find that to find those kinds of doctors, a lot of times they don't take insurance, you know, to find the best kind of doctors. And, and I can imagine that going through all of this and finding the best people would be very expensive. What, what, was, what were some of the challenges with, with finances at that time? Because now you're probably just focused all in on that but no one really saves up for the time they get diagnosed for can with cancer. So yeah. how was that experience? For you? Well, I was a member of the Screen Actors Guild at mm -hmm. the time. And so I was a union member and uh, my 
health insurance was through the Screen Actors Guild. And I was very blessed that I had it um, because to your point, that's an enormous amount of money to to buy, to have to pay if it's out of pocket. Um, and I had almost let my dues lapse, which thankfully, you know, I don't know, I think it was like a some sort of guardian angel who came in and said, hey, open that, be, be a responsible union member. Um, but a lot of what I had experimented with and tried and I had done, I've been on a very big healing journey was and continues to be something that is out of pocket. And so um, it's challenging. There's no way around that. I also have a very supportive family and there were times where I needed help, especially in the beginning. And I um, am the first to say, I feel very lucky that I was able to. Hey, so a lot of you all have been reaching out with your guest suggestions. And look, I appreciate it. I do. And to help make it easier for those guests to say yes to my invitation, I need you to subscribe to this channel. Just hit the subscribe button below. And that's literally the best way to help me get you that guest on my podcast. All right. Thank you so much for helping out and back to the show. Okay. So, um, and this is all a part of your story. It's all been well documented in your other books. Just give us a little montage of uh, how you kind of navigated that and how did the documentary come about and how did that lead to your marriage <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, all the things um, kind of taking us up to, to, to now. Yeah. So I left the hospital. I went to Whole Foods. I started, I put all the vegetables in my cart and didn't know what to do with them and was terrified of kale and thought that life is truly over because I have to eat this thing. Um, and then I bought some cookbooks and I started to learn how to cook healthy food. And then I realized this doesn't have to be terrible. And I actually, oh, wait, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. You know, it's the classic journey. And um, what happened that summer was I actually went to New Mexico and I started to to I went to U, the Upaya Zen Center. And so I've gone to Whole Foods now because I'm thinking, okay, I'm I'm addressing what I'm eating, but my mind is a mess and I've got to address what's eating me. Mm. And I was there and I just so happened to to see that Sharon Salzberg was teaching that night. And I had heard of her, but I didn't know much about her. And she gave a Dharma talk and I was hooked. I was like, I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know how long I'm going to live, but however long it is, I want to feel as good as I'm feeling in this moment. And so I'm going to see if they'll let me stay here for a little bit. And so I stayed at Upaya for a time and, um, and that was kind of the beginning of this healing exploration that I decided I wanted to document. And first and foremost, I was documenting it for myself, but also because as coming from the arts, coming from a place of being a creator, that's how I get to know myself. That's how I make sense of what's happening in my world. Um, it gave me a creative focus. It gave me something to take my mind off of cancer. Um, and I started filming my experience and then, um, was that just you with the camera or did you have people? No, it was just me. I borrowed a friend's camera and he literally, I mean, I had done a lot of still photography in my business, but I didn't know how to make a film and he would mm -hmm. teach me, you know, little things here and there. And then I decided I wanted to make a little trailer cause I had been filming for probably about six to eight months. And a friend of mine reminded me that I knew this guy named Brian, who I thought was a drummer. And it turns out he was a film editor. I'm like, you mean the drummer guy? He's like, <laughs> yeah, no, he's an editor. I was like, oh, I need an editor. I want to cut a little trailer because I had heard about this industry night and all I needed was a trailer mm -hmm. um, for the film that I was working on. And he cut the trailer and we submitted it to our, to the industry night and we actually got picked to be represented. And, um, and then I sold the film to the discovery channel and 
I mean, this is a four year process and all of it was on my credit cards. So it's not, it's, it's not totally a, oh, wow, that's so easy. <laughs> Did Brian agree to work for pay or was he a part of the, like, if you join me, then we'll sell it together type of a deal? I think he agreed to do it because he wanted to date me quite honestly. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, you know, no, uh, yeah, that was part of it, but yes, there was, I had no money. So it was just, will you work on this on the side? And, um, and then of course, then he did get paid and he was a big part of the process. He was co-producer of the process and, and we got married. So the end of the film ends with us getting married, um, which was not how I thought the film was going to end. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I think there was a part of me that wanted the film to end with this happy story of remission, you know, and to be honest with you, there's a, the reason why it took almost five years to make was because I was still trying to cure myself because I thought it had to be like a classic hero's journey of, the moment the rupture happens and then the hero goes out and learns a whole bunch of stuff and it bring, brings all this information back to the village and there's some sort of great happy ending. And I kept pushing it off because I hadn't self-cured um, with all of the radical, integrative, functional, back then they called it alternative treatments that I was doing. I thought none of this will be valuable unless it all goes away. And so the tagline for the film ended up being looking for a cure and finding a life. Um, was it was it an easy sell when you were pitching it or did you no. have to go through like a lot of just re rejection? <laughs> Endless rejection and all of it of just, you can't. Because you think your story is really interesting, but you know, you like, you put it I in thought the it was interesting. The market is um, like, well, no, 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 no. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear a story about cancer and nobody wants a story about cancer called that. Like it was all this no. And I just said to myself, and back to your original question, if I hadn't learned how to take rejection and keep going, I, I wouldn't have kept pursuing it. Mm -hmm. um, but I had taken so much rejection in my previous career that I was like, all I need is one person to believe in me. You just don't see it, but I see it and I'm going to keep this faith and I'm going to keep moving ahead because I will find one person who believes in this. Yeah, I had, I had the same so thing. That was it. The most valuable experience from modeling was all the rejection because literally, well, I didn't realize that to be a model, you had to be discovered. Like that's how it's traditionally done. I discovered myself. I just woke up and decided I'm, I'm going to be a model today. And I went to all the agencies, got rejected by everyone, and then got some more pictures, went back, got rejected by everyone again, except for the last one. And that happened to me in several different markets. So I just figured, okay, well, this is what it is. You just get rejected until someone someone believes in you. So I'm so glad that you uh, you pointed that out because I feel like, again, a lot of people listening to this are probably going through some aspect of rejection, you know, and, and so easy to personalize it and think, oh, well, maybe my project is not that great. But the real the reality is you just need to find someone who aligns with your mission and don't water down the mission. Just keep keep exploring tactics. What were some of the tactics that you you had to explore that you didn't anticipate exploring when you first set off on this project to get your film and your book and all that stuff out into the world? Well, first, I had to learn how to be a filmmaker. And thankfully, Brian, you know, was a filmmaker, is a filmmaker. And he was like, how about B-roll? How about I teach you a couple of other things? And I was oh, you like, didn't have any B-roll? Oh, no, I was like, just, just nothing. Just it, you on camera all the time? Uh -huh, it was terrible. It was terrible. Meanwhile, I've been in the industry for how long? You know, um, so I think part of it was I was so hungry to learn and I was so excited. And it was, it was that hunger and that excitement and that connection to curiosity and joy even though what I was talking about was really tough stuff, um, it was very fueling for me. And so just staying in that place um, was how I just kept moving forward. And also, I think when you come from a background of being an actor or a model or a performer, you're used to playing somebody else. You're used to projecting a certain image that it's it's not necessarily you. Um, and the shift for me was 
this is your opportunity to be fully yourself. And the more fully yourself you are, the better chance it has. Was that intuitive or did you, did you, did someone kind of guide you in that direction? Um, I think it was partly intuitive, but it was also the clips that I would show that were more raw or more vulnerable or had my real humor were the things that the network was responding to Mm -hmm. and anything that was too polished or performative was like, you know, we would get an enormous amount of notes and deflated and whatnot. It was like, oh, so the goal is just to be yourself. I got it. <laughs> oh, well, who is that? Well, guess we'll find out. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.